About 10 months ago, I made a video evaluating the ancient Egyptian vases that Ben Van Kirkwick from Uncharted X likes to promote so heavily. Now, if you're not aware, Ben believes these vases show a degree of precision that should be unobtainable by the ancient Egyptian technology that history records them having had. Therefore, Ben believes these are the product of higher technology. Now, in my video, I did make a couple of errors. The first one makes me look pretty dumb, but thankfully it was serendipitously. It didn't really change my overall position at the end of the day. I conflated two different vases for the same vase. Again, thankfully, it didn't really screw up much. But the other one, well, that mistake I need to address here. Now, when I talked to Matt Bell on his Limitless podcast, I did mention this, but not everybody that's my subscribers seen this, and it's something that I definitely need to get out there and make sure that this retraction is issued. <laughs> so, hi, my name is Dan, and welcome to Debunking. Now, before we get started, I have a quick announcement to make. I'm a speaker at next year's Cosmic Summit. I know, pretty crazy, right? So, um, that's like the biggest gathering of pyramidians in the Americas. I mean, maybe even in the world. So, I don't know. You should probably go if you're into that sort of thing. There's a link down below. I'm not the only person that's going to be there. There's going to be a whole bunch of people talking about all kinds of great stuff. And you can see me in person and yell at me or, or compliment me. Say you like this video. You can be like, Dan, that was a great take on that. Congratulations. Say you hated this video. You can be like, Dan. You're an idiot. Let's arm wrestle over this to see who's right. However you want to do it. But I'll be there in summer of 2025. So links down below. Come check it out. All right. Back to the vases. Now, in my original video, I said the following. These measurements are extremely good for an ancient artifact. I mean, human visual acuity on average is about three thousandths of an inch. And we have some of these measurements that are down to a single thousandth of an inch. And that's amazing because that would be invisible to almost every human being on the planet. But there is a disparity on the screen. There's a problem with the data between those two handles. There's a huge disparity. If you look closely, you'll notice it. And it's not in the measurements themselves. It's in the number of reference points taken. And this is where we're going to start to go into some weeds. One handle has 4,325 data points. The other one has 3,802 reference points. That's a difference of over 10%. Now, th there is some junk data that's created when these scans are taken. So it it's very, very common. As a matter of fact, a standard operating procedure for them to go in and edit some out with that editing software. The rotation table is positioned. A scan is made. Data is collected. The scanner is repositioned, additional rotation cycles are executed, and the entire process is repeated until we finally have enough data collected on the surfaces we're interested in. The last step in the process is to remove all of the bad data. We can see all of the islands that are not connected to the main portion of the mesh. Most of these islands are bad data that can be deleted. So while there almost certainly wouldn't be an identical number of reference points when you have this many, 10% is a very, very, very high disparity. I mean, look how little was removed from that wave bird that I showed you that the guy was doing. Less than 1%, I would say, of those data points were bad. But here in this case, 10% are removed. Um, you know, that, that might not sound like a whole heck of a lot, but like, like, check out Fox McCloud here, and he's all closing in on Andros. You know, Andros has about 40 reference points. I wonder what would happen if we eliminated four of those. Well, look at that. With just 10% of the reference points gone, I can make whatever the hell I want. Now, obviously, this caused me to look a lot closer at how the data was gathered, and that seems to be where the issue is. When Nick says that they did a full inspection, meaning that they edited the data, Nick and I then did a full inspection in a sof software called Polyworks. This is very clearly them editing the data. I mean, it's normal. It's a standard thing for them to do to go in and remove some faulty data points. But this looks like way more than it should be. Now on its face, this makes sense. I mean, a precision object that's symmetrical, having pictures of it taken by a precision scanner, should probably have the same number of data points no matter how you flip it. That's what you would think. Now, a lot of people told me I was an idiot, but they didn't really give me any good reasons why. It was just a little mediocre kinds of arguments that we would have, but there was never any real salient data points. 
uh, Matt Bell made sure and let me know that he didn't think that Alex or Nick would do such a thing, that he was there. And, and, and Matt, Matt, after talking to the guy, man, he's a pretty above-the-board dude. He seems pretty chill. I, I like Matt. Um, and I did get to handle the vases. And that, that there, there is a little bit there, too, that makes you think about things a little bit differently. But uh, the biggest thing that really clued me into how this was all different was when I started doing some actual research. One of my Patreon supporters pointed it out to me. He was a Ko-Fi supporter. Yeah, I was a Ko-Fi supporter. Mentioned it to me that I, I had this a little bit wrong, and they kind of just poked me in the right direction. And when I ran down that rabbit hole, well, I'll explain it to you. No, I know this is going to surprise you here, but light scanners use light to scan things. And that's usually a really good medium to measure with light. It's about a lot better than a string or a tape measure as far as being extremely accurate. I mean, it allows you to not have to worry about things like, you know, gravity or about wind blowing or things like that. It's the same pretty much every time. However, it does have its own set of unique issues. In particular, it hits things differently. Certain things will create glare, certain things the light will bounce off of at different slight angles, certain things will generate more shadows than others. There's a lot of problems that come with light scanning that you wouldn't think of if you didn't work with it or didn't have somebody to say, hey, dumbass, this is, this is exactly what you need to be looking at. So when you take a vase, like this guy here, I, th I think I'll put it here, um, and it's got all these occlusions and shit in it, right? It's got all these different little pieces of different material spread throughout. That is where you're going to end up, that's one place where you could easily end up with tons of differing data points because you're going to get glare, you're going to get light bouncing in different directions because those aren't symmetrical. No matter how symmetrical the measurements are, that part itself isn't symmetrical. The other thing that's worth mentioning is when you have a shitload of data points like they took, you're going to generate a higher percentage of noise. I've left some links in the description. This is the kind of sciencey stuff that I'm not too terribly interested in because I don't really care about how how big a light scanner, how great a light scanner is. And there's basically it's a lot of software that they use to remove this stuff. It's, it's it's a whole big old mess. I left some links down below that you can read. But this is the kind of science stuff that I get bored with, and I sure as hell don't want to bore my audience with it. Now, having said that, I was very rotten about it basically i was all but saying alex dunn and nick sierra were falsifying the data now this is the only data set in the original project that's cut in half like this usually it's the like the entire top or the entire bottom or the entire center but with the lug handles it's the left and the right so you can see this disparity in data points even though that thing was on a table that was spinning perfectly and didn't move except for the spin, so it should have identical pictures if you have identical handles, there's a 10% difference, over 10% difference in reference points. So this is kind of a smoking gun for if there was any manipulation done in this editing, if it was done under the, t under the board, this is the smoking gun for it. And it seems that they thought so too, because when they did this the next time, they didn't do the next vase's handle separately. They put them together as one measurement for the handle. So you can't see that how many data points they did or didn't eliminate. Using tons of data points in theory should be a good thing, but in practice, when we know that they're selectively removing them or that it's highly suspect, it's just a way for them to hide that. Oh, look, we used 10,000 data points. I mean, we gathered 11,000, but we threw 1,000 of them away to make it look the way we wanted. But, dude, check it out, 10,000 data points. You know how accurate that is? It's a lot of trees to hide in. I think at this point you'll agree that the scan data is suspect. Now, that doesn't mean that these things aren't precise. It just means that what we have here was fudged. Man, that was unfair of me, all right? I mean, I want to apologize to Alex and Nick because... I shouldn't have accused them of fudging the numbers. I, it doesn't look like they did. And I'm sorry for saying that you guys did. That was my mistake. Um, just as a way to mitigate this in the future, not to blame anyone, but um, Ben, since you're the one who packages this stuff and presents it to the public, you might think about like mentioning this just like you try to talk about other, other you try to mitigate other arguments. This is one you could probably head off at the pass by just pointing out that light bounces off of these crystal inclusions and shit way different than it will off of it if it was just like the same colored surface. So that will generate a big disparity in data points, which may potentially look dishonest to the outside viewer. Anyway, not pointing fingers. Now, something I want to mention here as well is that this didn't change my opinion on the vases 
that I came to, the conclusion that I came to at the end of my last video, basically that these are not the product of high technology, that they're the product of a primitive lathe, one that's driven like by hand or feet or something like that, belt driven lathe probably. Now, this is kind of a big deal because the lathe is supposed to have shown up in Egypt around 3,300 years ago, but these vases come from closer to 5,000 years ago, maybe even longer. So this is the kind of information, hard data, that could push the dating of the lathe back in Egypt by almost 2,000 years, right? Now, and that's the kind of, of like academic coup that get, lets, lets a guy write a paper and publish it and then write a book and publish it afterwards because people are so interested in outside of just regular old stuff, a, a regular academia. This is something that's freaking cool, man. So, in my opinion, Ben made some very important discoveries here, and they're being ignored, for the most part, by academics. Now, they will eventually get picked up. I'll almost guarantee you, at some point, academics will figure out that, okay, they, the ancient Egyptians have the lathe further back in history than we assumed that they did. And whether or not Ben Van Kirkwick's name will appear on that paper really has a lot to do with what kind of archaeologist writes that paper, doesn't it? Now, thanks so much for watching. And before I go, I want to mention really quick, I met Randall Carlson and his tour group just a couple of days ago before they went on their tour of the Channel Scablands. They start here in Spokane, and I live here in Spokane, so bada bing, bada boom, we all met up and chatted before they took off. For about seven hours over the course of two days, I talked to Randall and a bunch of the other people that were part of the tour. A lot of the people knew who I was already, which is kind of humbling and awe-inspiring and amazing all at the same time. It's like... It Takes a little put my head in that in that quite right. I'm used to just putting my head down and putting wire nuts on shit, right? Just just a lowly electrician. But it was really interesting and nice talking to so many people that had so many different ideas, but we're all like we're just sitting around chatting and having a great time. That was a lot of fun. My buddy Tim, he he put me in a dang helicopter and we flew around parts of the I mean, holy crap. I'm sure that you're looking at footage right now and holy crap. Was it fun? Just amazing. Lake Ponderé, seeing part of Lake Ponderé that's basically inaccessible. Nobody ever goes to this part right here for obvious reasons. But but I, I, I was I mean, close enough if I really wanted to. I could have reached out and touched it and I had fallen. But anyway, I had a really good time. And talking to so many different people, that's one thing that I'm so looking forward to about the Cosmic Summit. is not just getting up and giving speeches to people. Getting down there and getting to shake people's hands and talk to them and just sit down and, and shoot the shit. It's going to be great. So, anyway, I want to thank you all very much. I want to thank my Patreon and Ko-Fi supporters and everyone else who takes the time to sit there and watch my shenanigans. You guys have a great day. We will see you next time.